Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole, and welcome to my huge re-review of the brand Kopari. If you've been following these re-reviews, which are going up every Monday and Friday this month on the channel, then you know that we have kind of a, a specific layout for this video. All that goes out the window today with Kopari. We have a brand here that I think most people associate with kind of more of a body care brand. And so in today's video, we are going to have categories in the description box below, timestamps as well, for a section on Kopari's body care, a small section on their face care, and then finally a category for sunscreen, which is a lot bigger of a category than I thought it would be. Kopari's really going in the sunscreen direction lately. So as always, feel free to use those timestamps if you are just interested in one particular category or if you don't like intros, because I do want to have an intro on today's video. I really want to have a moment to just reflect on how interesting Kopari is as a brand. Kopari is so funny to reflect back on because I first tried this brand years ago. I've lost track. I've lost track of how long ago it was, but they were a completely different brand. There's only a handful of the original products that we still have today. And I think it makes sense because of how much Kopari changed their direction. In case you don't know the backstory of Kopari, this is a brand that was built on a foundation of coconut oil. And listen, there are some people who love coconut oil, that is great, but there are a lot of people who very much avoid coconut oil, especially in facial skincare products. They also were a brand that had amazing scents from day one. A lot of people avoid scents in their facial skincare products. And so it seems to me that Kopari did something that is really exemplary with the kind of negative feedback that they were getting from a lot of people. And that is rather than feel frustrated or feel like, well, we just have to shut this brand down. No, they said, okay, so we haven't quite made the products that most people want. What can we do to change this? What direction can we go in so that people do like our products? And so they went in kind of two distinct directions. One is to really embrace those amazing smells in their products, but to keep it to body care, which is brilliant. I suspect I am far from the only person who is hesitant on scented facial skincare, but give me all the scent in my body care. My body can handle it and I crave smells. I want good smells in my life. <laughs> And then they started formulating their facial skincare to be fragrance free, to no longer have coconut oil ingredients. And yet for those who still enjoyed that original idea of this being a coconut oil based brand, they have still continued to make coconut oil products now in unscented or in a variety of scents. And they even updated their packaging. Let me actually really quickly talk about their refills. I don't know if everybody knows that their products are refillable. This is the new outer packaging and rather than repurchase an entire new tub, you can just buy the refills and they fit right in. What else did I have in my notes? Oh, I also wanted to say, I feel like this is such a good brand for gifting purposes. I, every Black Friday, I go onto the Kopari website and stock up on, in particular, body care. I feel like body care is such a good gift. Skincare is hard. I do like giving skincare as a gift, but I feel like it's hard. You never really know if you are, you know, buying the right products for somebody's face. Whereas body care, it's, it's a lot more fun. Now, both because this brand is wonderful for gifting and also because there's a lot from this brand. They've grown a lot. I do think that one of the best places you can start is with their gift sets. Kopari has really nicely curated gift sets and they also have some of the cutest accessories. So I'm actually wearing the Kopari bucket hat that you can get in a set. Here's a bag that comes in some of their new uh, sunscreen sets. I guess what it is with the accessories is it's not just your standard little small cosmetics bag. It's, it's actually thoughtful. You know, this is, it's a cute, it's a bouncy bag. It's so cute. 
I feel like bucket hats have been everywhere lately. They have, you know, again, not just, it's not just a standard boring hat that says Kopari. Look at the detail. It feels super nice too. I do want to make sure to say this is, again, a brand I've been buying from for a long time. At some point they found this channel and were kind enough to send over some PR. So in today's video, it's going to be a mix of products I've bought as well as products the brand has sent me. Hopefully at this point you all know that just because something was sent to me does not mean I'm going to give it a glowing review. I just don't think that's helpful. I think it's a lot more helpful to be objective about products, to really ask yourself, you know, would I buy something again? If not, why? And we are going to have a few products like that in today's video. I do also have a code with Kopari. If you would like to get 15% off your order as well as help to support the channel, you can use code 15 off Alice. But again, this video is not sponsored. It is absolutely all my own opinions. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. So let's go ahead and start out today's video with the biggest category, the body care. Again, it's a big category. Kopari is one of my absolute favorite body care brands, but I do have two holy grails from Kopari. And first of all, it is going to be, some of you can have your bingo cards ready on this one, the Ultra Restore Body Butter with Hyaluronic Acid. Oh my goodness, this is such a good body moisturizer for several reasons. First of all, Kopari is so good at scents. We've already talked about this, amazing at scents, and you have a variety of options here. So I have an unreliable nose and I have self-awareness of that fact, which is why I went to my sweetie and I said, I need you to smell all of these so I can take some notes. <laughs> so I'll start with the Tahitian vanilla scent. According to Ara, this smells like light vanilla with cocoa butter undertones, smooth and relaxing, and a relaxed version of the Boom Boom Cream. Oh yes, it's impossible for me not to compare these to the Boom Boom Cream also. For the original scent, she said this is a floral version of the Boom Boom Cream mixed with a little bit of pralines. I do think this smells less strong than the Tahitian Vanilla. And then finally, Ara's favorite is the guava version, which she said smells like, indeed, rich, rich guava, rich guava. Oh, it really does. It really does smell like guava. Luscious fruit and floral. And she said it smells a little bit like Hawaii, Hawaiian aloha from Glade. Did you all see the internet get so mad at somebody for, for saying the uh, suave as suave? <laughs> Yes, I use Suave hair care that I buy from Target. Sorry. Anyway, all three of them smell amazing. It's just a matter of personal preference. But I do want to talk about the texture. We've already compared these in terms of smell to the Boom Boom Cream. But for me, it's in the actual usage of these where these come out above Boom Boom Cream for me personally. Boom Boom Cream has a really strong and I think good smell to it but I just don't feel it's that moisturizing. Whereas Kopari's Ultra Restore Body Butter is so nourishing. And because it's so nourishing, you actually really don't need a lot of this product. A little goes a long way, so it lasts you a lot longer than the Boom Boom Cream. With kind of a more balanced amount of smell, I think that's, that's really the biggest catch with Sol de Janeiro's Boom Boom Cream is it's so scented that you better hope that everybody around you likes the smell. <laughs> Whereas these, you get a lot of that scent experience while you're applying them, but I do feel it's lighter throughout the day. My other favorite body care product from Kopari is by far the KP Body Bumps Be Gone with 10% AHA. This is our favorite scrub in the household for both of us. We love this one so much. I do want to say a few things with this. First of all, this is not limited to just KP. You can just be somebody who enjoys scrubs and you will most likely enjoy this one. It definitely has a much more rich scrub feeling to it. Oh, it's so wonderful to use. It is actually an unscented product as well and it does contain 10% AHA. So you're getting both physical and chemical expo- Why am I- what was this? Why am I not showing you the texture of this? You're getting both chemical and physical exfoliation. It feels so, so enjoyable to use this. It really, 
makes a big difference in your skin. Wonderful product. I actually do have a video on this as well. If you want more information, it's a comparison to some of the others, but this is my, this is my favorite scrub. So those are my two favorites in their body care section, but I think rather than kind of uh, go through this in a linear way of favorite to least favorite. I think I'm going to hop around because I want to compare that to a newer product they've come out with. This is the Pink Glow Exfoliating Body Polish. And this is okay, but this is a personal preference thing. This is a little bit more of your standard salt scrub. I don't have any problem with it. I just personally do prefer the KP scrub. And I think to stick with the exfoliating products for a moment, let's talk about the new KP Body Bumps Be Gone Clarifying Body Pads. Again, this is a bit of a newer release. It is made with 4% AHA and BHA. And these are exactly as you might suspect, body pads that you can use all over your body. Now, I don't actually have KP. However, I decided to start using this because I had some uh, ingrown hairs on my legs. It was really strange. That's not something I usually deal with. But yeah, these ended up surprising me. Good solution for that. And it doesn't leave you sticky. I feel like a lot of uh, AHA products kind of leave your body feeling a little sticky. They did a good job with these. Some regular cleanser options. Again, these come in a variety of scents as well. The Tahitian Vanilla Hydrating Body Wash. I actually finished this one off. I don't usually have body care empties in my, my big empties videos because it would just be too much to hold on to. <laughs> but I just finished this, so I thought, great. We can put it in the Kopari video. The uh, Hydrating Vitamin C Shower Oil, I do really like this because I have dry skin. You know, this is another situation of personal preference. If you have dry skin, you might quite like a shower oil. If you do not, you might not like it. You might want to stick with the more traditional kind of gel washes. Another lotion option is the Coconut Body Milk. I don't actually use this one too much because again, I have dry skin. So I am probably going to gravitate towards the heavier body butters, but this is a nice product. It's definitely, if you want a, a lighter lotion option, that's exactly what you get with this. I already mentioned these in the intro, but one more time, the coconut oil options are called the melts. This is the Tahitian vanilla variety, and I still am working my way through an old original. This is what they're prior packaging looked like. So, you know, coconut oil has a variety of uses. You can use it for your hair, you can use it on your body, you can use it to remove makeup, just tons of, tons of uses for coconut oil. I personally think it was really smart of Kopari to go in the scented direction with this because their coconut oil is a little bit more pricey than some of the other options out there. That is one of the main original criticisms this brand had. But like we've talked about with all natural oils, they really all will vary in their composition. This is something I've tried to explain a lot of times on this channel. It's something that is extremely intuitive for me because this is pretty much a big part of what I do as a nutritional scientist, but it's something that's surprisingly hard to communicate, i found. People get really thrown off when you say, yeah, there's chemicals in a natural oil. Of course there are, right? And that chemical composition will vary based on where in the world an oil is from, how is it grown, how, how are the nutrients supplied to the plant from which you get the oil. Which is all to tell you from day one, I have understood why some people give the coconut oil from this brand a, a five-star glowing review and others give it a one-star review. It makes perfect sense because we're all different, we all have different experiences, and you might find this to be the best oil you've ever tried or the worst. We're all different. And then the final product I'm going to talk about in their body care is the Coconut Spritz Mist, which is a very interesting product. This is kind of a hybrid between your standard body sprays and a toner. A little bit of both worlds there. It has some niacinamide, some brightening, some hydrating ingredients in it. And it sprays as, let's see, maybe I can let's just spray it on my hand here so you can hopefully see. Can you see that it almost sprays a little bit like a lotion? I feel like that's an interesting idea. The reality is I don't use it as much as I thought I would. Again, I think that these body care, skincare hybrids are optional and you might find that really all you need for your body is some humectants, some emollients. Now that I've gone and said that, I do have to admit something though. If you are somebody who does not like the feel of body lotion, 
This might be a really good in-between because it sprays like a spray, but it actually does kind of feel like a lotion as you massage it into your skin. So it, it's, a, it's another product where I think it very much could have a, a perfect audience, but if you're somebody who likes lotion, do I think you need it? Probably not. Let's do our next section, which is facial care, and it's going to be overall small. It's kind of facial care and lip care. I'm gonna start this out with what is one of my most repurchased products of all time. Here's a bit of a fun story for you. So I had this idea in my head of doing a Alice's most repurchased skincare products video. I thought it would be really fun, but you know I'm me, you know I'm a huge nerd. So I had to sit here going through my email, counting the number of times I've repurchased products. <laughs> and after doing that, I decided to ditch the video idea because it just, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> You would think that it would make perfect sense, but in fact, it doesn't. In fact, my top two most repurchased skincare products of all time are... No, it is not a dappling. It's not a dappling that's too new. It's not the uh, uh, CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. No, it is Lancome's Bifacil and Copari's Lip Glossy. It feels like it doesn't make sense. I don't even talk that much about makeup remover, and yet... I wear makeup, so I use a lot of makeup remover. Yeah, those are, my, those are my top two repurchased products of all time. So anyway, you see why I ditched the idea. It's just that I'm constantly trying new serums and moisturizers and sunscreens, so of course those aren't my most repurchased products. It would be products that I don't talk as much about, wouldn't it? See, see now it makes sense. But anyway, this is my favorite lip gloss, and here's why. It's just so easy to throw on your lips. I don't need a mirror. I can just throw this on and my lips feel so comfortable. They have this really pretty glossiness to them. And the thing is, this really gives me results. I actually was thinking about how I switched to kind of some of the heavier, occlusive feeling lip balms. And it's bizarre how my lips start to dry out if I only use occlusive lip balms. But that does make sense because you also need hydrating and emollient ingredients even for your lips. And I feel like that's what Lip Glossy does so well. It's hydrating and it's emollient, which means it hydrates my lips, you know what that means, and it, it feels like it sinks into the cracks in my lips, which I definitely do have, <laughs> thereby softening my lips. Just really, really comfortable. Does not have any kind of unpleasant taste. In fact, it tastes good. <laughs> Don't eat, your, don't eat your lip gloss, but if you do happen to eat it, it doesn't taste bad. They're not the most inexpensive lip balm, but I feel like for the amount of product in here, 0.35 ounces, the price is extremely reasonable. It's just my favorite. There are some other varieties, but I always come back to clear because again, it's just the easiest to wear. I love it. My other favorite Kopari skincare product is one that I just did not expect from this brand. I just did not expect this in the slightest, but this brand came out with, and I kid you not, one of the best moisturizers I've ever tried in my life. You've already seen me talk about this in my favorite heavier moisturizers, but the thing that's so interesting about this product, the Moisture Whipped Ceramide Cream, is that it, it has this beautiful, overall innocuous ingredients list. It really shouldn't be a problem for most people since they did formulate it to be fragrance free, but they also made it in this texture where it does feel whipped, but it's in a way that you can apply either a small amount of this and get you know, perfect hydration and moisture for your skin, or you can apply this heavy and it still buffs nicely into your skin. I guess what it is, is that this kind of a texture is something that several years ago, this would have cost so much money, so much money to get such a beautiful, cosmetically elegant, non-irritating, moisturizing and repairing moisturizer. But Kopari has managed to do it again for, you know, not the cheapest on the market, but I would say a reasonable price overall. I guess I am kind of going in order with our, our facial skincare section. So let's talk about the Lychee Clean Vitamin C Foaming Face Cleanser. I think this is a very optional product, although admittedly, I love it. And again, it's kind of consistent. I've talked about how I love this style of foaming cleanser, where it starts out foamy, but as you massage it into your skin, you actually 
lose the foaminess. It just seems like that is a less stripping variant of a foaming cleanser than the kind that foam up as you use them. I also have to admit that my my real dorky side comes out every time I use this. I, I even did it in the clip and I wasn't trying to, <laughs> but in the clip you're seeing, I definitely it turned myself into somebody that says, I don't know, something about hydrogen, oxygen, and Merry Christmas. It's just kind of fun. Why would you not have fun with life? You know, why would you not? Why would you not? Bottom line, it's optional, but I do think it's fun. We have a couple more products that I would not repurchase here. So we have the Niacinamide and Caffeine Eye Bright Cream. I don't hate this one. But I was thinking about how, you know, just in, in Friday's video, I talked about an eye cream that I clearly very passionately love. I just don't feel the same about this one. I mean, it's not bad. Niacinamide and caffeine are great brightening ingredients and depuffing ingredients. It applies nicely. It's green, which kind of surprised me the first time I use it, but it doesn't make your under eyes look green. It does buff into your skin and it is nice under makeup. But would I repurchase it? No, because if you saw Friday's video, you know there are eye creams that I like more than this. And that's really all it is. And then also the Tripeptide Lip Cloud. This product is just not made for me in any sense. First of all, this is a lip oil. And maybe it's just that you're either a gloss or a lip oil person, but I don't think I like lip oils. It definitely is a lip oil. It tastes like natural oils. It smells like them too. And it's got a little bit of mint in it. Just a, a triple combo of things I'm not going to like. Do you all want to know what my favorite lip oil is? It's the one from Rare Beauty. <laughs> what have I done? What, what have I done? Anyway, it's not for me, although I will, I will say one thing. I do kind of actually like applying it. It's got this huge, huge applicator, which is fun to use. I wish I liked the formula more. And let's end out this video with sunscreen, which has become, Kopari has become so successful for their sunscreens. And when you see them, it is very clear as to why. So let's start with the body sunscreens. Can you see how utterly beautiful these products are? They have their original and now they have the rose gold option. There's a few things to know about these. They are chemical sunscreens, which means they buff in with absolutely no white cast and they really do feel like a body oil, so it's it's no wonder that they've become such viral products. But at the same time, I do wanna make sure to say, use a lot of this product. You know, I think it can be really tempting to underapply a product when it's beautiful. Or, or is this another me problem? When a product is beautiful, I really don't wanna finish it, right? Right, is it a me thing? Anyway, you do wanna finish your sunscreens and you do wanna make sure you're applying a lot of them. So yeah, I think these are absolutely beautiful. They are SPF, I don't know why, but this one is SPF 45 and the original is SPF 50. I don't know why. I did actually apply this brand new product to my face, the Sun Shield Soft Glow Daily Face SPF 30. Again, I was nervous about this product, but I have to say, if you are not sensitive to chemical filters, this is such a beautiful facial sunscreen. Oh my goodness. Now I admit, for those of you that know this channel, you know that I do have sensitivities to certain chemical filters. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, they're not bad ingredients, but some people do react to them. Go figure with my sensitive skin, which you have seen me turn into a tomato from other products in the past. That has happened to me with some chemical filters. So it makes it really scary to try other chemical filters. I know some work for me, but I'm just not sure on the ones that they use. However, to my surprise, I was not getting any kind of immediate reaction from these. But as such, as somebody with sensitive skin, Kopari still came through and came out with a product that is for us, and that is the Antioxidant Face Shield Mineral SPF 30. I'll go ahead and put up the video of applying this one. It's a really nice, mostly mineral sunscreen. Again, I would say this is, it looks like it's a hybrid to me since it does have that butyloctyl salicylate in it, which also makes it apply more nicely. It's very interesting because it has this kind of more emollient feel to it, where it makes for a really nice primer under makeup, wearing it today, in fact. It doesn't leave a white cast on me, but worth knowing, my skin type is certainly more in the fair range and it 
feels very comfortable all day long. I've even noticed that this type of sunscreen, the kind that feels more emollient, you know how in the past, I think a lot of us used to kind of fear sunscreen because we would break out from it quite bluntly. Ooh, some of those old school chemical filter sunscreens, Ooh, I had really bad reactions. My skin would be a mess for days. This, as well as some of the other occlusive feeling, um, emollient and occlusive feeling sunscreens, strangely enough, I feel like it really improves my skin. This does make sense. It's a, a protective feel and zinc oxide as well as butyl octal salicylate are overall innocuous for the vast majority of people. So I really like this. It's interesting to me. I think I, I got an email from Kopari a few days ago that they sold out of this one, even though they have all of these beautiful chemical filter sunscreens. This is the one that is currently out of stock. But I guess I'm not really surprised because I, I don't think I'm the only person that is a little bit more sensitive and thusly hesitant. Overall, I think all of their sunscreens are great options. Just make sure you apply a lot of sunscreen. That is very important. And make sure you choose the one that will be for you. And my friends, that brings us to the end of my huge Kopari review. Again, if you want to buy from the Kopari website, you can use my discount code 15 off Alice. That's it for today's video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.